Sun Tower, good afternoon. Runway 27, right one estimated 080 at 3, clear for takeoff, change your departure, have a safe flight. At Osan Air Base, a U.S. air base in South Korea, they are watching. <laughs> Sending these spy planes, dubbed Dragon Lady, up over the Korean peninsula. We're busier here than we've been probably in the last 10 years. We're very busy. Um, but we, you know, we are tasked every day to fly our, our mission, so we do that. Pressurized suits allow pilots to soar at altitudes of 70,000 feet. That's twice as high as a commercial jet. The one-seater spy planes are flown by eight specially trained officers. The job to provide intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. A window for Washington into North Korea needed now as much as ever. Everything that this aircraft is collecting is almost instantaneously sent down to people who can process, exploit, and disseminate that information in minutes to our leadership. We would be ready to launch operations out of both airspaces or both air bases at, uh, at a moment's notice and be ready to, to fight tonight. Major Danny Trueblood is on a two-year tour to South Korea, taking up a job that U.S. troops have done for decades since the end of the Korean War. The F-16s are, are, are uh, pivotal to the uh, to to basically the defense and uh, any potential uh, actions. So with, uh, with, with GPS or laser guided weapons, we can strike an, a variety of different targets. This U.S. airbase is fewer than 40 miles from the North Korean border. These supersonic jets can fly about 16 miles a minute. So in the case of a conflict with North Korea, they could reach the DMZ in just two to three minutes. They practice daily, sometimes with mock battles. On this day, 12 of the Air Force's F-16 fighter jets take off. Because we don't know uh, with the unpredictability of things, tonight may be, in fact, the night. So we train every night. Still the same work they've done every day for decades. Now with the world watching, what happens next?